What's up, everyone? Kevin Allen here from DFS Army. It is week three of the 2019 fantasy football season, and I'm about to set up my lineups on the Domination Station Optimizer for the week three NFL slate on DraftKings. And I figured, what better time to make a tutorial video on how to use this than right now as I do it for my own lineups here late night on a Saturday night. So um, I'm really excited to sort of do a second tutorial video on how to use the new stacking system that we've set up for NFL for the Domination Station. Let me be clear, there is no more sophisticated or high level stacking NFL stacking or more controlled by the user stacking system in existence. So this is a very, very powerful tool that we've created. This is something uh, that was almost a full year in the making. And so I'm really excited to bring this to you guys and to kind of give another tutorial on how to use it. So let's get started. All right. So we have brought up the um, DraftKings NFL slate classic mode main slate for tomorrow. That's your starting point. Now, let's take a look at some of these options and see if we have anything that we need. So um, the first thing I do when I set up my lineups is I go through position by position. And I, so I like to eliminate any players that I really don't want to use. So, you know, as far as this grouping goes, I just go through one at a time and I click on, this is DraftKings, so... Yeah, I click on any player that I want to allow in my pool. And I'll uncheck any player that I want to disallow from being in any of my lineups. That's your starting point. So as you can see here, I'm just going through checking off any players that I think I might want at least some exposure to. And just kind of leaving out players that I don't know. One way to uh, get a little bit better, a little bit fewer names here. I'll do this after, but if you increase the fantasy points range, that will filter out a lot of players. They'll go over to this excluded section. Um, anybody below 2.7 fantasy points. So I like to do that a little bit, maybe speed up this process. Um, we'll go over to each position group. And again, I start off by unchecking the whole thing. And then we check back in any potential... players that we want to allow into our lineups. Now this doesn't mean we're going to use these actual players. It just means they're eligible to be used. And then we'll we'll break it down even further from there as we sort of dissect the slate and set up our stacks. We're not even setting up stacks yet. We're just setting up the player pool. So let me pause this and I will go through this position by position group and get it ready. Okay, so I've gone through every position group and I've just removed any, I've unchecked any players, defenses, whatever it is that I don't want to use today. So that's our starting point. Now, obviously, as DFS Army subscribers, one of the things we get, which is very beautiful, is our coaches notes. And you have these for, from myself, from Keg. Marley, Chris, DFS up north, Mutt. So, so all of our NFL coaches are breaking down these games and giving their recommended plays, recommended stacks. I stick with the Geeks notes because that's what I make. So why wouldn't I? So anyway, um, this is a sort of a an outline of which quarterbacks I'm I'm interested in using, what players I'm interested in stacking them with. So we've got this outline here to work with. I have it memorized for the most part. So I'm just going to start going through and setting up stacks one by one. Now, what is the beauty of the new stacking system? Let's talk about this real quick. Here's the first window. Okay, we open up the new stacking system and it says create new rule. So each stack rule is based around a quarter, a quarterback. First thing to note here, secondary stacks. This means on top of whatever stack we're adding based on the quarterback, we're going to have uh, we're going to force it to include a secondary stack of some sort, meaning something that has been successful in the past. Um, WR opposing uh, ca pass catcher. Uh, we've got running back opposing team 
pass catcher, running back, wide receiver, same team, running back, defense, same team. Running back, wide receiver, opposing team, wide receiver, wide receiver, same team. So yeah, there we go. So those are our basic stack rules and our correlation stack rules, right? Now, we're going to start adding in our quarterbacks one at a time. So the first one, obvious one, Pat Mahomes. I'm going to set him for 15%. I'm going to set this up as a game stack. Pat Mahomes, I want two players from his team. No less than one from the opposing team. This is going to be a game that we're going to get a ton of exposure to. Now I can go through this and kind of look through and make sure that I'm not overloading on any one spot. Like, I don't want LaShawn McCoy to count as part of my Mahomes stack, so I'm going to set his max exposure at zero. That's one rule. Boom. Down. All right, let's keep going. Lamar Jackson, also a game stack. We love this game. Now, how am I choosing this? Again, it's written up in the coach's notes. If you read through, game stack, uh, Hollywood Brown, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's going to tell you an outline of what to do. I'm not going to tell you how much of each quarterback because you can you can choose based on your tolerance. But, you know, we know high projected games. That's where we want teams game stacks, right? We want to have a quarterback with at least two of his pass catchers. And then a, one or two of the opposing team's players. Now, with Mahomes, I do two. With, with Lamar Jackson, I'm going to do no less than one, no more than two. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because... I don't want every single lineup to have, you know, Lamar Jackson, Mark Andrews, Hollywood Brown, because Jackson is a running quarterback and he can do some things with his legs. So there are some scenarios where Lamar Jackson is the nuts and it doesn't involve two of his pass catchers in that lineup with him. Um, but I do want two players from the Chiefs in these because the Chiefs are just if if this game's going high, we want a couple players. Kelsey, Watkins, Robinson, Hardman. I would like um a couple players from here. And again, I'm gonna limit my LaShawn McCoy explo exposure. I'm just not too keen on Shady this week. Uh very tough matchup. So uh, I'm not gonna get too much of that. All right, keep going. Matt Ryan. One of our sneaky snack snack choices for this week. Ryan to Julio. I always love Matt Ryan when no one's on him. Anytime Matt Ryan, no one's on him, you got to love him. Now, one thing, okay, once again, I'm going to set this one up. I think I want two of these players. I'm going to do a 5%er, two of these players, and I don't want too much Hooper. So I'm going to go 30% Hooper, which is going to kind of force all the other lineups to combine Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley. Um, Yeah, yeah. Where's Sanu in this in this uh, scenario? I probably don't have Sanu checked off. Let me check. Let me see. Sometimes when you uncheck everybody, you also uncheck the players that you might actually want for some of these stacks. You could bring them back in. I can check him back off just to get you know, just in case, right? Look, Sanu pops back up here. I don't want a ton of Sanu, but again, I'll set him at twenty percent max only within this stack itself. So hopefully that will work. 50 server, everything's set right. Okay, as we're making these stacks, we're counting the percentage. So just to be clear on what's going on here, stack quarterback Pat Mahomes with a minimum exposure of 15%. That means it's going to force Pat Mahomes into approximately 15% of the lineups that I create right now. 15%, there's no exact... Uh, div divisor, for example, for 5% of 150 lineups. So sometimes you'll get a little bit of rounding uh, errors here. But for the most part, 15% of 150 lineups, Mahomes. I've got 20% Lamar Jackson. That's 35. I got 5% Matt's Ryan. That's 40. I'm going to keep hammering through, right? I like Kyler Murray a lot this week. He's one of my favorite plays. So we're going to boost him up. We're going to give him 20% exposure. That's um, 25, 45, 60. Got to 60, right? Now, I like Kyler Murray as a game stack. Yeah, why not? Yeah, why not? We'll do one from the other game. We'll do two from his game. 
Now, who am I including? Every one of these guys is cool to include. I don't want too much of uh, Keyshawn or Demir Bird, so I'm going to limit each of these guys to 20%. The rest of them I want liberally sparkled across my lineups. Okay, so that's 20%. Now I'm going to grab the guy on the other side of this game. I'm going to do a little stack with him too, just in case. I'm going to do 5%, right? Uh, 1 to 3 correlation boost on team stack on and then we'll do two to three from the opposite team so this will give us a little more exposure to that game again count them up 25 30 50 65 so we've got a little bit of room left let's see who else we like this week Aaron Rodgers um, actually let's go through this list yeah Jameis Winston I can do five percent I'll do a game stack here to now wait james winston only has eligibility for these two guys they're the only two players i've ch i've checked off right we can add back in howard so that we have at least three going for this guy right so now we've got oj howard in here i'm gonna do a one to three stack i don't know if i want two to three i mean james i don't love james winston to be uh you know this this play is making me sick canceling it don't like james winston fuck james winston he fucking sucks all right let's see who else we've got on our list here matt ryan kyle murray the lemon jack pat mahomes okay so i'm going to add some more in just because i want a little more diversification although i don't have a problem if you just kind of jack up your your three or four guys like like let's take you could take matt ryan to 10 percent um i'm gonna add in let's do a dak prescott five percent or i don't think the cowboys are going to be throwing that much let's add in a we don't want a game stack here let's add in tom brady five percent yep those are your three brady pass catchers that's perfect correlation boost on correlation boost on um that's let's add in aaron Rodgers. Where are we at? 5, 10, 15, 20, 40, 45, 65, 80. All right, we'll do a Josh Allen. This is also going to be a team. When you're doing these individual ones without a lot of correlation, we can double up the secondary correlations if we want. Um, Josh Allen, let's do 10% on him, one to three. I only really want one guy and it's not gonna be Frank Gore. So actually, you know, I don't, the negative about this stack is always this. It's gonna be basically Allen to Brown or nothing. So I'm just gonna make this a five percenter. Um, let's see if we can find any other quarterbacks we want a lot of exposure to. If we can, it's not a problem, not a problem. I'm do a Daniel Jones stack 5%. No one's going to be on this. Let's make that a game stack. Okay. Yeah, I like this. Okay. And then we'll just raise up the other ones that, uh, once I figure out what the percentages. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 50, 55, 60. 80, 95. We'll raise up Lamar a little bit more. Love Lamar. Okay. We've got 100% of our stack set up. This is it. The big moment. Let's do our first run. Now, if you think that it's as simple as doing this and just doing a single run, you're crazy. This is going to be a, a quite a bit of 
press uh, optimize, look at the results, make some modifications, run it again. And actually, I already see here, look how fast it's running, though. We're, we're, we're flying through 150 lineups. Every lineup should have a quarterback stack with at least one pass catcher from his team. Some of them will have two pass catchers. Some of them will have players from his team, the other team. Secondary correlated stacks. You're going to have these lineups are designed to superpower build to win tournaments. Okay, this is this is how you win a tournament. All right, check it out. 15%. We said we've got 15% Mahomes stacks. Here we've got 63% Watkins, Kelsey, Andrews. Then we've got some Kelsey, Demarcus Robinson, Kelsey, Miko Hardman. And it looks like Kelsey's in 100% of these. So we're going to we're gonna go and deal with that first things first. I don't want 100% Travis Kelsey. So in my Mahomes lineups, we'll go. I love Kelsey this week. Don't get me wrong. But we'll go 65%. Another thing I want to do is make sure we're getting more diversification by jacking up our uniques to four. Um, I've got my tight ends limited to 20%, which is fine in the flex. That's about what I want. So we've now done that with Kelsey. We're going to run it again. And this is the process. I'm going to do this a bunch of times. Now, um, each time we run the domination station, Notice that it's running really smooth. I'm going to do a check of some of the results in a second. But notice it's running real smooth. We didn't put too many constraints on it. We didn't put too many restrictions on there. But we're not done just running this the first time. We've got to go through it, make sure we're diversified enough. I want to make sure that my Daniel Jones lineups has some Evan Ingram, some Barkley, and some Godwin, and some Evans, and things like that. So I want to make sure that each setup is diversified. And each time we run it through, I also need to make sure our defenses are properly spaced out because, as you know, and everybody knows, defense wins championships, not just in the NFL, but in tournaments as well. Like last week, if you didn't hit the 37-point defense, you're not going anywhere. Here, all right, so here we go. We're already starting to see some exposures. I love this. So let's go through it and start to set our limits. Now, I've got way too much Nelson Aguilar here, and I've already said I don't want to be overweight on him. In tournaments, he feels a little bit like, you know, fine for cash, but the kind of play that I don't like to make. Um, this is way too much Keenan Allen for my taste. I'll go about 15% here. I do love um, Fitzgerald. I love these guys. Uh, 10 will go. Again, we're just kind of limiting some of these turds. I think Boykin can have a good game, but I don't want to bet with that much money on it. So let's I'm going to go through each group, kind of look at who's popping a little too much. I'm liking the way the um, tight end group came together. I'm not going to mess with that too much, but I'm sure a defense, I'll need to do some adjustments here. Let's go 10% Cardinals. Let's go 10% Bills. You know, I just want to make sure that some of these turdly defenses, I don't get too much of it. Um, McCaffrey, maybe that's a little too much, so I'll go... You know, 35%. That's definitely way too much Philip Lindsay. So we'll go 5%. Let's go, let's go 10% on, on Philip Lindsay. They still throw to him, and I think he's probably potentially a better play than some of the other forty five hundred dollar running backs on DraftKings. Um, let's see who we got a lot of, who we didn't get a lot of. David Johnson, Zeke Elliott, plenty, Dalvin Cook, I love, Chris Carson. We're gonna throw some likes on some of these bitches. Slap a like on that mofo. All right, so let's go through the running back group here. I'm actually going to do a little bit of liking and loving. And I like Chris Carson. He gets a little like. Let's see who else. Are we not getting enough Saquon? Not getting any Saquon. That's not good. I like Saquon Barkley. Let's let's get a like on him going. Wow. If I don't adore him, he's not going to show up at all. Um, Dalvin Cook. I got a little bit going there. Uh, Austin Eckler. Plenty of that. Dalvin Cook. Let's give him a like. Like Dalvin Cook a little bit here. So just getting getting our our player pool worked out. We've got 
let's take a look at a lineup that's being generated right now. I just want to just want to see. So um, what we're getting as we look at our combinations, every lineup should be a quarterback stacked to a pass catcher. In this case, it's Dak, Zeke, Elliott. There should also be a secondary stack in here. Here it is, Arcega Whiteside, Nelson Aguilar. Now, I don't love two pass catchers from the same team. Here's Zach Ertz. So we've got three of these guys. And that is not my favorite type of uh, approach to doing this. I actually think that the projections on Aguilar and Arcega Whiteside are probably causing them to pair up too frequently. So I'm going to create a rule. Aguilar with exactly zero of I don't want these two together so I'm going to create that rule as well oh yeah there we go okay so our other stacks are still open but we've now added a rule let's see if that let's see if that clears that up that's going to be actually really interesting to see if that works I haven't tried this But I don't want those two together. So that is one thing I don't want to see. And this is how the process works. I run it again and again and again, and I massage the results. I, I modify it. If I see a player not popping as much as I want, I raise a projection either by using the like button, the love button, whatever, the lock button, rarely the lock button. But also note, very important here, I never use min exposure for anyone. Um, normally we can use it for the quarterback position, but because the quarterback position is being completely driven by our stack settings, we don't even need to use it there. Let's see if our Seagull wide side and nope, they don't show up together anymore. So there we go. We're not getting that, that pairing anymore. There's Deontay Johnson showing up. I like him. So now a couple things we can do here. I want to show you now let's see what we ended up with. To be clear, these are all the stacks we requested, and it looks like it filled in the less ones, the the um, the ones that didn't fit anything with a Jameis Winston stack of some sort. Okay, or a uh, Jameis Winston lineup. But let's take a look at one of these lineups here. We got Kyler Murray, Christian Kirk, Larry Fitzgerald, same team. We've got Greg Olson from Carolina, so bringing it back around. Then we've got a Chargers Austin Eckler secondary stack in this lineup. Okay, so look at the correlation going on in this lineup right here. Uh, this is the idea of the new stacking system. Secondary correlated stack. So not only can we control, this is unheard of in the industry. Not only can we control exact exposures to each player within our stacks and we can see the stack combinations right here and make adjustments if we like but not only can we control the exact player exposures within these stacks we can also control and force it to have secondary correlated stacks so we're doing game stacks with secondary these lineups are so correlated that it will blow your fucking mind here is chris carson seattle pittsburgh so you've got Running back, opposing wide receiver. Here's a Kyler Murray, Kirk, Fitzgerald. McCaffrey, running back on the opposing team. Let's find the secondary stack. Sometimes I can't find it. <laughs> oh, here it is. Allen, Will Fuller, wide receiver, opposing wide receiver. Bill's defense, Frank Gore. That's another correlated stack. Defense, running back. So what we noticed is that winning tournament lineups have correlation everywhere, not just a quarterback and a wide receiver. Generally, there's correlation all over the place. So that is what the system is designed to do. Here, DK Metcalf, Seattle. This is probably, He's probably in here because, yeah, here we go. Carson Metcalf. So you've got a Seattle, Seattle kind of situation going on here. 
correlated. I'm just looking through each quarterback position group to make sure that it's not overly loaded in one thing. Dak Prescott stack. Let me see what I did here wrong with Dak Prescott. I don't like those pairings. Is Amari Cooper available? And yet it's using so much Devin Smith. Hmm. Where's Randall Cobb? That's the problem. And I'm, I'm going to do a two-man stack. See, that's what that's what I've got to do. I, you know, and that's what you got to do it too. You got to go through it position by position. When you when you uncheck some of the player pool, players that you other might might want to use in a stack will disappear. So so you want to actually be careful about that. Look at each team, and if you're not familiar with the players on these teams, just leave the whole pool in there and remove the low projected players. You know, that's just another way to do it. But like right now, I'm going to add Randall Cobb back in, and I'm sure these Dak Prescott stacks will look better. Now we have more players to choose from. Now I'm going to go two players with Dak, not one. Going two. Going two. Getting silly with it. So I'm going to do one last run here, but I, I want to end the recording here. This is just a general idea of how to set up the domination station using the new correlated stacking system to create correlated lineups that are designed to crush tournaments on FanDuel and DraftKings. Okay, no one else has this tool. I really want you guys to enjoy it. It's finicky. Like anything else, the more settings you put in there, you start setting exposures low, start putting all these guys at 10% and whatnot, you're going to break the tool. It's not going to work. But for the most part, if you if you run it exactly like I did just now, follow the process because you've seen me do this right now from start to finish. It's running 150, no problem. And every lineup looks beautiful. If you have specific players that you don't want to pair up, you can use the separate rules feature. for that situation but again let's just take a look kyle allen christian mccaffrey quarterback pass catcher opposing wide receiver opposing wide receiver okay that's our primary stack now we've got cook stefan diggs secondary stack love this lineup this is like a cash lineup right now I don't love Mohamed Sanu, so I'm actually going to make a rule here. You know, if you don't like Mohamed Sanu, you make a rule. Only allow Mohamed Sanu in lineups with Matt Ryan. Now, Sanu is not bad there. You know, I'm going to leave it. But in general, I would make a rule like that. If I didn't like him there, I would make a rule like that. Now, we still get to go through the player pool itself and make our adjustments to it if we need to. So we have that ability. I could look through this whole thing and say, all right, I like this guy. I like that guy. I want a little more of this guy. I can raise up his projection. You know, I can lower a projection somewhere else. I like uh, Will Fuller, so I can do it. I can raise it. I can raise it a little bit. We can we can do what we want. I like Stefan Diggs at this price. Let's let's raise him up a little bit. Deontay Johnson, no one's on him. I like that. So there's all these guys that I like a little bit. I might, I'm going to go through this, make my adjustments here and there. I don't even understand how John Brown is only 13%. Let's see what uh, 1%. Let's see what our Josh Allen stacks look like. Hold on. Mostly Cole Beasley. So I don't like that, right? So we're going to go up to Josh Allen. That, that's the beauty of this. You're going to have to take some time. Where's Josh Allen? That's the beauty of this thing, though. You take a little bit of time. You look through eat one by one. And if you're seeing things you don't like, you can adjust it. I don't like Josh Allen with all Cole Beasley. As a matter of fact, I only want him with like 10% Cole Beasley. And I want him mostly with John Brown. So let's... Every time I make an adjustment, I run it. So I want to make sure it still works, right? Sometimes we make adjustments too much and it breaks it. You, you know, we, we've added too many things and then we can't figure out what, what it was that we just did and you end up having to start the whole thing from scratch. So every time I make an adjustment or two, I start it all over. Anyway, this is the process. 
30 minute video within 30 minutes i've already got my lineups mostly done i will still work on this for the next hour or so just modifying the projections uh increasing messing with the pool setting limits on certain players i go through a position by position pl player by player one at a time and i run it again each time and the reason i do it that way is just so I can see every time you make an adjustment, it affects a lot of different things. So I like to do one adjustment at a time for the most part and then run it again. I'll do that another 25, 35 times before I'm done here. I like to look at every position group. Oh, this is a little too much of this guy or a little too much of that or a little too much. Like I'm not going to allow 43% of a defense or 30% of this defense right here. So I'll, I might go 10 um, for the Chargers, you know, that kind of thing. I don't want 1% Cowboys and 43% Patriots, although I do like the Patriots more because they're cheaper on DraftKings, but on, on FanDuel, but yeah, I might limit that to 20%. So I'll do a couple little adjustments like that every single run. That's more Chris Carson than I need or want. So I still have a little bit of work to do here as far as massaging these results, but you get the idea of how to use the tool. When you're done, select all, download lineups, boom, upload it to DraftKings. Throw it in whatever contest you want. They've got mini max. They've got nine dollar, five dollar, whatever price point you want. They've got a game right now going, and get ready to crush these tournaments and take down first place. These lineups are built to look like um, lineups that have won tournaments in the past. Now, if you're watching this video, and you're not a v DFS Army VIP. You're not a subscriber. First thing I would ask you to do is, if you are, you aren't, whatever, hit like and subscribe if you like these kind of videos to learn how to crush daily fantasy football or daily fantasy sports at all. This channel, this YouTube channel, will always have something going on. Hit like, hit subscribe. Next, go to DFSArmy.com, sign up as a DFSArmy.com VIP. Use my promo code, GEEK. You can get 20% off your monthly dues. We crush all sports. We don't penny pinch you. One price after the discount is $39.99. Covers all sports, all sites, all of our tools. We're not going to ask you for separate money for the site and then separate money for a fucking optimizer like other people do. Okay? This is our optimizer. It's custom. And you get it as part of your membership. You want to go somewhere else? That's cool. Go pay 50 bucks for an optimizer and then pay another 50 bucks for projections and advice and ownership projections and all the shit that we have going on here. That's fine. I don't care. Or don't do anything even better. We need fish in the pond to feed on but if you want to start winning at daily fantasy sports you want to attack a tournament properly and increase your odds of success this is how you do it correlated lineups highly stacked complete user control i love it so excited for t this week get these lineups going and to take down some tournaments man i can't wait to come back on this video and like post my winning screenshot it's gonna be awesome all right good luck everyone